you know, there are many people who come to faith in Jesus Christ through avenues like Catholicism or some sort of religion that's based in works. And it's pretty easy to think of the way you become justified with God through that lens that you've got to do certain things. You've got to live up to a certain standard before God will accept you. Well, the Apostle Paul is very clear, and we're going to look at it today in the book of Galatians, that that is not how we are justified with God. In fact, it's entirely different than that. Let's take a look. Last scripture sketch, we followed the Apostle Paul's logic through the issue of how we become justified with God. So in other words, how are we made right with God? And Paul established it is by faith in Jesus Christ, not through the works of the law. But that kind of brought up the question, okay then, if we're made right with God initially through faith in Jesus Christ, then what about the rest of life? How are we to live moving forward? Is that through rule keeping? Is that through something similar to the law where we established a set of do's and don'ts and that's what we adhere to? That's where Galatians chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 come in. This is Paul's answer to that question. And he does so, he answers the question by bringing up a spiritual reality that many of us don't notice. Let's read the passage and then we'll go back and kind of dissect it. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh. So that's talking about everyday life right there. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. All right, so Paul's talking about every day living here. We see that by, by the phrase he uses, the life I now live in the flesh. That's every day living. And how does he say that is to be carried out? We'll look here very carefully. He says, I live by faith in the Son of God. So the very same way we are justified with God is the very same way that we are to live each day. And Paul bases that truth on this mysterious spiritual reality about you and I as believers. And it's right here at the beginning of verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. This fact is something we don't understand fully. It's something that is true of our identity. And the reason it's important is because the I that he's talking about there, this first person singular pronoun he's talking about is the old me. It's the old you. It's the old Paul. The one who was steeped in sin. The one who habitually was transgressing God's law. That is who was crucified with Christ. So as Jesus took the sin of the world to the cross, he not only took the sin, he took you and he took me. You see, because our problem is twofold. Our problem is not only that we sin, our problem is that we are sinners. And we have to be careful about this. We have to understand we are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. You see, behavior flows out of identity. And Paul is saying that problem has been taken care of because I have been crucified with Christ. And he says now in the everyday it is no longer I who live. So I died back there. Death is the end of that whole problem of being habitually drawn to sin. Now I have a new identity. And that new identity is not just that I've been given a new name or I've been, been called by a new title, but I have a new power source for living. And I want to use a different color here because it's important that we notice this. But Christ who lives in me, so notice the connection he's making. It's no longer I who live. I'm just connecting it here. But look at that big word. I'm going to change the color so we can notice it even more. But Christ who lives in me. This is not hyperbole. 
or figurative language. This is reality. Jesus lives in believers. He lives in us. His power, his identity, his being is in us. And the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God. So in Jesus right here, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, Jesus' love is what motivated him to go to the cross, to take away our sin. But his love also empowers us to live every day. And then Paul makes a very interesting statement that we need to pay close attention to. He says, I do not nullify the grace of God. Now, how would he be doing that? Well, he gives us a clue what he's talking about in the next phrase. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. So what he's saying here is when Jesus loved us and gave himself for us, that was an act of grace. It was the grace of God coming to us. And he's saying if we try to be approved of by God through the law, then we are nullifying the grace of God. We are saying we can handle this. We can uh, make you happy by living rightly. And that was our problem to begin with. We couldn't make God happy by living rightly. He says if we, if we try to live that way, then Christ died for no purpose. And my friends, that is absolutely not the case. Jesus came to do these two things, to take away our sin so that we can be justified with God and to give us power for daily living. All right, let's sketch that out a little bit to see how that might look. All right, let's start by drawing a human being here. We'll make it a, a woman human being this time. And she is uh, tooling along through her life. I'll just consider this like a timeline. And she comes to the place where she recognizes her need for help in this thing we call life and being good. And she's tried the law. She's tried living rightly and it just hasn't worked. And so she comes to a place where someone introduces her to Jesus Christ. We'll represent that moment by placing a cross here on her timeline. If she places her faith in Jesus... And I'm going to just put a little arrow like this that shows she is relying on Jesus. Then some amazing things happen. Way back in the past, not her past. You see, her birth was like right here somewhere. Way back in the past, the actual cross of Jesus Christ stands. Where he was crucified. Where he took the sin of the world upon himself. And the scripture tells us, Paul's telling us right here in Galatians 2, verse 20, that at that moment when she places her faith in Jesus Christ, something amazing happens. On a spiritual level, she is identified with Jesus and is crucified on that cross with him. That's her that this is happening, and it happens through her faith in Jesus Christ. So her very identity is back here on the cross. Her very sense of, of sinfulness, her condemnation before God, it's all crucified there on the cross. Nevertheless, moving forward, now we're, we're talking about moving forward from that point of salvation, she lives. And why does she live? Because now, Jesus, I'm going to make this another color just so it's easy to keep track of. Jesus lives through her and in her. You see, he is now indwelling her. Which means all kinds of things. It means he is her life, her actual life. He is her power source for living. He is her guide. And we could just go on and on. But this reality is foundational for a successful Christian living. And notice, it is not about law keeping or rule keeping. 
It is about this pivotal moment of faith in Christ. And it's not just faith here at this point of salvation. It's faith every day that she lives her life moving on into the future. It's trusting that this is true. Jesus indwells her. Jesus is all of these things. Her faith in the moment of temptation, in the moment of conversation, in the moment of choosing, in the moment of responding, is all based in faith. That is what it means. She doesn't resort back to law keeping. She doesn't resort back to do's and don'ts and lists and things like that. She every day sets her mind on this truth that Jesus is indwelling her and is now her life. And I'm just going to write that up here. Jesus is her life. That truth is what matters for her every single day.